Hi there. My name is Ms. Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 9 academic students who are studying the measurement and geometry unit. This is still part one of that unit where we look at two-dimensional measurement. So far in this unit we have already looked at a review of the formula for basic shapes, the Pythagorean theorem and right triangles. So both of those to topics are covered in video number one and video number two. So that makes this video number three. And in this video, we're going to mostly look at composite figures. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, a composite figure is, is by definition a shape that is composed of or made up of more than one basic figure. So if you look at your formula sheet, you know that you have, we have five basic figures that we're looking at in this unit, and a composite figure is made up of two or more of them. So this shape here could be considered a composite shape because you consider it to be made up of a rectangle plus a triangle. Now technically you could also just think of this as a trapezoid, but for example, maybe I have a composite shape that is a rectangle and a semicircle. Or maybe I have two triangles and a rectangle. Okay, so a composite shape, again, is just made up of two or more of the basic shapes. So how do we deal with composite shapes? Well, again, we're still going to have to find both area and perimeter of these shapes and maybe do some other math as well. Um, so the concept of area is pretty straightforward. We're just simply going to be dividing our composite shapes into their basic shapes, finding the separate areas and adding them together. So for example, if I saw this as a rectangle and a triangle, then I would do separate calculations where I find the area of the rectangle, then I would find the area of the triangle, and then I would add them together to get the total area of the composite shape. To find perimeter, well again, perimeter is not something that you need formulas for. A perimeter is basically the sum of the edges around the outside of the object. So absolutely, this is where your formula sheet for perimeter is incredibly useless. Because what I've seen some students do, and these are students who rely far too heavily on formula sheets, is tell me that the perimeter of this shape is the perimeter of the rectangle plus the perimeter of the triangle. And hopefully you can clearly see that if that's what you've done, you've done this non-perimeter line twice. And that's obviously not part of the perimeter of that shape. So please make sure that when you're finding the perimeter of composite shapes, you're not at all using formulas. You're simply adding up the outside edges. So let's look at a couple questions together and we'll deal with composite shapes. So here's the first one. It says that a lawn care company charges customers based on the size of the lawn. And so here's the schedule it uses. So for a small lawn, less than 200 meters squared, it's $50 a month and so on. So this table here is obviously going to be relevant. And it says the company is caring for Denton's lawn, which has dimensions shown. So here's Denton's lawn. And you can see that we want to consider this to be a composite shape. Although, again, you could technically call it a trapezoid, but we're going to pretend that it's a composite shape. The question is, how much should Denton be paying per month? Well, to figure out how much he pays per month, I have to figure out the area of his lawn. So this is purely a question about area. So again, to deal with composite shapes, what we want to do is we want to divide them into their basic shapes. So I'm going to draw a line like this, and I'm going to call this shape 1 and call this shape 2. So with that information, what I want you to do is I want you to press pause on the video, try the math on your own, and I'll meet you on the flip side. Okay, so I've divided this shape into a rectangle and a triangle. And don't, you know, it's easy to kind of look at this rectangle and, and think that it looks kind of like a square. It's obviously not a square, so never assume something is a square unless you're specifically given the information that it's a square. So instead, what I have is a rectangle whose area is length times width, so 14 times 15. So the area of that rectangle is 210, and again, it's meters squared. So 210 meters squared. Then we have this triangle here. So for that triangle, we know that the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. 
So let's see if we can figure out what the base and the height are. So again, here's the triangle. And so this would be the 90 degree angle. And I know it's a 90 degree angle because when I drew this line, I purposely drew it to be perpendicular because otherwise, if it wasn't perpendicular, I wouldn't have a rectangle, I wouldn't have a right angle triangle, and therefore I wouldn't be able to do the question. Okay, again, so we're looking for the length of this side and the length of this side. Well, the length of this side is clearly going to be the same length as this side. So if this is 15, then I can say that this is 15. So what about the length of this side? Well, I know that this distance is 20. And if I cut it here, this is 14. So again, this piece here is going to match this piece here. So if this is 14 and the whole thing is 20, well, this distance has to be 6. So now I know the base and height of my triangle are 15 and 6. So area of the triangle is 15 times 6 divided by 2, which is 45 meters squared. And therefore, the total area is equal to 210 plus 45, which is equal to 255 meters squared. So are we done the question? Almost. Don't forget, the question wasn't directly find the area. It was how much does Denton have to pay to have his lawn cared for by this company? So if he has 255 square meters, he's going to fall into this category. And so therefore, therefore Denton has to pay, and I believe it was $70 a month. Yep. Okay, so one thing to be careful is make just because you found something excellent, like the total area, don't assume that you're done instantly. Make sure you go back and double check that you're answering the actual question that was asked. Let's look at the next question. So again, this is clearly a composite figure. It says the cutie, tra the cutie cupcake company is having a sign made. The sign will be a semicircle, meaning a half circle, on top of a trapezoid. And it says, what is the total area of the sign? So I'm going to ask you to press pause in the video, do the math yourself, and I'll meet you on the flip side. OK, so this actually tells me or suggests to me that I cut this shape into a semicircle and a trapezoid. Now, you could also cut the trapezoid into a triangle, another triangle, and a rectangle. And that would be certainly fine too. It's just that obviously it's going to take a bit more math. So I'm going to leave it as a trapezoid. So to find the area of the semicircle, well, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, and this is half of a circle. So I'm going to adapt my formula slightly to represent the fact that I only have half a circle. So it's going to be pi r squared divided by 2. And remember, radius is half the diameter. So that if the diameter is this measurement, 2 meters, then the radius is going to be 1 meter. So punching this into my calculator, I get an area of 1.57 meters for the semicircle. Now let's look at the trapezoid. So again, the formula for a trapezoid is a, oops, area equals a plus b divided by 2 times the height. So a plus b, let me clean up my diagram a little, a plus b are the two sides that are parallel to each other. So a plus b is going to be 1 plus 2 times the height, so the height we know to be the perpendicular length, so that's going to be 0 0.75, oops, and then of course all of this divided by 2. So do that math, and I get, oops, one point one two five and i'm going to round at the very end of this question instead of right now so that's why you notice i'm not rounding and i just noticed i forgot to write meters squared up here i know that you noticed um, so we'll do it now and therefore i can now tell you that the total area is one point five seven plus one point one two five and now when I add them together, I'm going to make sure my final answer is properly rounded. 
and I get an answer of 2.695, so I write that as 2.7 meters squared. Excellent, so that's the total area of this sign. Now, even though it doesn't say it, I want some practice with you on finding perimeter of a composite shape. So I'm going to erase all of this stuff, and what I want you to do is I want you to find the perimeter of this shape. So even though I didn't originally say it in the question, what I want you to do is to press pause on the video and find the perimeter. So please do that, and I'll meet you on the flip side. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to, I always like to trace my pencil over, or roughly over, the part that I deem to be the perimeter. So there's the perimeter of that shape. I don't want to count any other line. So now I'm going to give each portion of this a particular title. So I'm going to call this um, part one. So that's going to be the semicircle. Then I have part two, which is part of a triangle. Part three, which is this bottom straight line. And part four, which is also part of a triangle. So there's going to be four little steps to my perimeter. So let's look at each of those steps in turn. So part one is a circumference statement. So the circumference of the circle is pi times diameter, but of course I'm not walking a full circle, I'm walking half a circle. So I cut my formula in half. So circumference is 3.14 times 2, and then divide by 2. So that part of my perimeter is 3.14 meters. Um, so let's look at portion number 2. So portion number 2 is this side of a right angle triangle. Um, so it looks like I'm going to need to use the Pythagorean theorem, but let's figure out, we need to figure out the lengths of the other sides. So one side is obviously made up of this height line, which is 0.75 meters. And what about this side here? So look carefully at your diagram. I know that this is one meter, and I guess we have to make an assumption that this is exactly in the center of that trapezoid. Um, and again, it's not, I don't normally like making assumptions, but since this question wasn't designed for perimeter, I think that that's a pretty safe assumption. So if this is one meter, then this plus this is a meter. So we're going to have to call this 0.5 of a meter. So there is the information I need to find the Pythag use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of this side length that I called number two. So using the Pythagorean theorem, I get c squared equals 0.5 squared plus 0.75 squared. So c squared equals 0 0.8125, square root that. And I get that c equals 0 0.9. So 0.9 meters is the length of this side here. So keep going. The third side, the third part of my perimeter is labeled at 1 meter, no problem. And the fourth side um, is actually just an identical shape to the shape that was the second side. So this is 0.75 and this is 0.5. So I don't need to use the Pythagorean theorem again. I know that it's going to be 0.9 meters. So altogether, add those up. The perimeter is... 3.14 plus 0.9 plus 1 plus 0.9, and so that gives me a total perimeter of, oops, sorry. Let me just double check. 5.94 meters. Okay, so make sure you're comfortable finding the perimeter of composite shapes. So one more question here on composite figures, and this will end the video. So what I want you to do is read the question carefully, press pause, do the math, and I'll see you on the flip side. And we're back. Okay, so I've divided this shape into two different shapes. One is the bottom rectangle, and the other is the top triangle. And obviously, they've kind of hinted at that with this line. So the area of this rectangle is just length times width. So 12 times 2.5 is 30 square meters. For the area of the triangle, just make sure that you understand that this length here is 5 meters squared. And so altogether, I get 60 square meters. And then if each paint liter covers 9, I need 6.7 liters, which means I should buy 7. 
So that's the end of composite figures. Look for video number four. four.